Okay, hello, hello, Tyler Bryan here. Hope everything's going well. This is an interesting topic that has stuck out to me, uh, which is this idea of prompt engineering. And the question I'm asking in this video is, what is prompt engineering? And the first, I, I had thought about this before, but then sort of formalized in clarity, uh, maybe importance in, in surface of mind uh, with this article from TechCrunch where it talked about a company named PromptBase, uh, which I do have right here, and I'll talk about it in a second, um, which is already charging. So it's basically built a marketplace um, to allow you to create better prompts. Specifically, they're looking at DALI right now and then GPT-3, um, but are planning to expand to other platforms. And those other platforms could be ones that, you know, talked about in previous videos, MidJourney, um, Cohere, um, AI2021 20, uh, Labs, like these different um, sort of versions of large language models, which then are typically taking place to do language generation tasks. And so, um, What's really interesting here and what some of the challenges is that these companies are very, these models, are, uh, pardon me, are very expensive to build, Mil millions of dollars of training, scraping data properly from the web, uh, compiling all that in together to then build these models, continuing, uh, you know, so top talent engineering, lots of data, lots of processing, and then ongoing optimization, management, feedback loop, feedback loop, et cetera, et cetera. So at the core level, expensive to do. And then what this means is there's a trickle-down effect. That trickle-down effect leads to basically there being it expensive to interact with. So I should, you know, if I was a smart guy, I would say uh, here's the exact cost per uh, um, uh, interaction. I know for DALI, for example, as they've released into more of a public beta, open beta, it's like $15, I believe, for every 115 credits. And uh, from doing some tests across uh, GPT-3 early, early stage also had, you know, what to me was a pretty, pretty high price point for those interactions. And then I've seen the same thing with Cohere. And the challenge I think is, you know, we know how much work it was. We know how much it trained, uh, you know, how much it cost to train this. But the challenge is, is that a lot of the results that are coming out of these systems are relatively unpredictable. Uh, sometimes not valuable, sometimes completely abstract, ridiculous, or, you know, just just useless, uh, basically. And as a company, because if you haven't built these systems yourself, you are then paying for each call. And so the idea here is that if you're paying for this and it is relatively expensive or you're doing high volume, that you need to engineer these prompts, these instructions that you put into these uh, language generation systems, into these big models to get more predictable, reliable, valuable uh, responses and as a lot of these things do come out of open or sort of come into private license use where there's uh, cost coming and we are now seeing open source models I talked about bloom I talked about other um, you know areas where uh, sort of open source versions of these are emerging and so maybe there is some uh, you know, uh, lessening of the cost, but maybe you need to want to run that yourself or, or train on, on top of it. Generally, there's going to be engineering talent or processing talent or server cost or per server cost throughout this entire process. And so the shift here that's going to happen, what, what this is going to drive towards is like, uh, you know, refinement of the prompts that we're doing to make more business use, practical value, um, outputs. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm, I haven't been playing around as much with GPT-3 just because, uh, you know, in general, I haven't found that much use from it. I know there's a great company, Copy AI, and a couple, you know, ones that have built upon this to generate it around marketing copy, all this stuff. But in my mind, I don't really see the value uh, of this yet. And I also have some skepticism about using uh, that kind of content on my articles or on a website, uh, knowing that, for example, Google is looking across the web, trying to um, find where people are using this, penalizing it, and then sharing that it's against the terms of service. And so for me, um, I've seen some people say, hey, it's really good for thinking of creative sort of campaigns and all that stuff. I haven't been as sold on that generation side of GPT-3. I think classification and in NLP is much more practical and valuable and relevant in today's world. Not saying that that is going to change. That's probably not going to change or that that probably is going to change and evolve as image generation as language generation uh, gets better. And so 
you know, I, the question is, and I think people, some people are sort of laughing at what prompt base is and, and then other people talking about sort of the ethics and, uh, you know, if this is, you know, a good thing, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But um, I've already seen, whether it's in the Mid Journey Discord or forums online on Reddit talking about, ha, ah, if you add this to a prompt, whether it's GPT-3 or DALI or one of these other ones, you actually get a more realistic, say, with the DALI, a more realistic Im- image or uh, you can actually, what, what they've done here is you, you, you actually can make custom emojis or you can do, uh, you know, product, basically product um, uh, ones that are much more maybe practical or use case and you can imagine and then create your own product, um, you know, with these. And, and while there is a, a level of unpredictability, you're sort of building some parameters around that prompt that you're doing to put it into uh, a case uh, that then allows you to um, have some predictability in the output that you're looking for. And one of the ones that sticks out to me was um, I was doing Pokemon cards. or And when I did Pokemon cards, I could basically stack a bunch of attributes of a characters or design or whatever it was into it. And it, But it would put it into the format of Pokemon cards. And so the actual output in the end was somewhat predictable. I would say still lots of edge cases around it. But by putting it in that package it actually had some more uh, of a refined use case uh, for me, even you know, even questioning how useful that is. Uh, and I've seen uh, Cohere do this with some magic, I believe, Magic the Gathering cards, et cetera, et cetera. So there is ways to sort of um, engineer these prompts that allow you to then uh, make these predictions. You can see, you know, here's there's some about aerial photography, nature, sunsets. I had done one uh, a video on YouTube on, on my channel about from the perspective of when I realized if I could type from the perspective of a bird, from the perspective of an ant, from the perspective of a human, uh, you could actually get... Uh, different levels of sight. Um, uh, so if you're a bird looking at the same tree, you're looking at above, where if you're an ant, you're looking up. And so that part was sort of a, a prompt that came to me just as an idea. And then I realized if added to the DALI image generation would allow you to um, have this more predictable output. And so people are already selling on this. So you can actually click. So I had clicked on, for example, tiny planets, and then they want this I have to register and it looks like, you know, they've got some, they're early, so they're very early in this stage. But I believe that this is actually going to be uh, a demand. Uh, this is, There's going to be a market for this. So uh, the revenue split is 80% of every sale. Prompt, t- prompt base takes a 20% fee. And then... Uh, and what people are saying is, hey, maybe there's a way that people actually get paid for discovering and debugging and figuring out what prompts are valuable and then selling it in different ways. So I'm I, this this again, this story stuck out to me and I'm, I'm really fascinated to watch this as it grows. And I think people might laugh at this right now, but I do believe in this future of prompt engineering. I think there's a huge use case for this in need. And I do believe in this, uh, you know, prediction that there are going to be a lot more um, sort of lang- large language models and image generation and language generation systems that are being used. Uh, and, and I think we're just at the very early stage of discovering how can we best uh, create, you know, sometimes just works of art, but in, in other cases, uh, reliable, uh, business-friendly, business-valuable um, uh, outputs uh, within this. So I have a bunch of links here. I, as always, I love my, my links. The question today really is just like what what is prompt engineering, and and you know f- f- from you know my own understanding and then some research from this is it's almost like defining the set of instructions uh, to reliably accomplish language generation task. And one of the articles here. I had shows just how many um, tasks there are possible just in a system like GPT-3. Uh, as an example, Q&A, blah, 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 movie to emoji class, like so many different versions and each of these could all be just played around with a little bit to make uh, a better output. Uh, and with that better output uh, means you might not have to do another one, which means you're saving money, you're saving time, you're saving human brain power to refine it. And I think over time we will see more machine learning applied to this system to engineer prompts better. I think the people working on the end, you know, ends of DALI and, uh, and GPT-3 and stuff, they're going to try to make these, um, these sort of uh, pieces more predictable. But then there's this weird conflict, which is, is some of the fun around this and fun, you know, again, might not be what businesses are looking for. 
is that that unpredictable, almost chaotic nature of putting in a prompt and getting back what you, you know, something that you've, you're looking for, but can't almost uh, execute yourself or are looking for a machine with so much data to then help imagine this. And this is where I'm, you know, see this sort of line in the sand where it's like, if I am trying to, if I'm trying to engineer prompts and I can't seem to get the output that I'm looking for, how many prompts do I do and how many engineers' minds or strategists' minds do I do to try to get that output versus just say, if it's DALI and I'm trying to get an image versus just hiring an artist to make that image who's obviously talented and you know knows uh, you know uh, Adobe Illustrator, whatever tools they're using or Unity or whatever it is uh, to accomplish that same task. And so there's this sort of, uh, pro, sort of, yeah, just split and divide between where that happens in these use cases where AI can be used and if with the right prompts and with engineered prompts can produce something that is beautiful and valuable for if done right at a very inexpensive cost and it's completely original. Now you have commercial rights to this, et cetera, et cetera, versus then going hiring, maybe a talented artist, having the back and forth, uh, you know, drafts, multiple drafts over and over again, requiring human input and labor, maybe expensive labor, et cetera, et cetera. So I do see this really uh, interesting divide emerging uh, between these two. And again, I think this uh, speaks to the value of prompt engineering and a future market that uh, we talk about like maybe our artists get eliminated or, you know, with every advancement in technology, some jobs disappear. And in other cases, uh, many more that you couldn't even predict come. And so with these, you know, just this exponential increase of interaction with these large language models, uh, I do think that we're going to see more and more jobs, titles, uh, use cases emerge that we just didn't expect that are completely new, that are novel, that are exciting, that bring something in that we just uh, couldn't even imagine just a few years ago. And I think that's a very exciting uh, time. And one of those is, uh, you know, prompt prompt engineering and just looking at you know if there's any other things uh sort of in these uh you know a couple of links and a couple of notes that i've made here but one of the bigger pieces here is this idea of sort of zero shot learning versus few shot learning which is generally and this is where prompt engineering comes in again generally you're not going to get the output that you want on first response unless you maybe have a, you know a lot of experience with these systems and a set of sort of uh, parameters or instructions that are extremely specific, allowing just enough creativity or creation that uh, GPT-3 or DALI or any of these systems create the output that is highly valuable. Generally, what is happening is there's this idea of few shot learning, DALI, where we can now see that where you can put in you can put in an image, but then you can make edits to that image with more text prompts instructions. And so this idea that it's going to take a couple shots to create the output that you want that engine then learns from those uh, few shots uh, that actually happen. So um, there will be, I think, more challenges with this. One of the things that I'm thinking about is just like, uh, is these these will continuous continually uh, change because the engines, the language that they're doing may change. So maybe a prompt that you've engineered works one day, the next day there's an update that's rolled out and that prompt no longer works. So um, that's another sort of risk, I think, in these systems and in the people who are working on this. So I do think um, we're going to see this grow. I think it's going to be uh, a competitive advantage if you can do it. I think it can reduce the R&D efforts that you do to have to discover a new prompt. Uh, I think there's going to be people who are trying to reverse who are looking at images, who are if, specifically with Dolly and trying to reverse that and then figure out how to... Um, uh, create that for their own business. I do think that there will be a lot of people who emerge in this market and maybe a couple people are accelerate or maybe it's the people like OpenAI um, who are leading this charge who just continue to refine internally and then reduce the burden on other outside parties to uh, create these uh, you know, engineered prompts that are, are doing really well, I think it's probably going to sit somewhere in the middle. So if you're asking what is prompt engineering, I hope this gave you some insight. Uh, I'm still exploring this myself. I'm going to publish more videos and content on this. If you like it, feel encouraged. Send me a message, like, comment, subscribe, comment for the algorithm, all that stuff. I really do appreciate it. It helps me know that I'm on the right track, exploring topics that you're interested in, that you're excited about, and that you're finding insight in. So uh, this has been Tyler Bryden talking about what is prompt engineering. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.